Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. In this episode I wanted to talk to you all about watercolour. Big big subject I know but what I have had several people ask me to do is to highlight some of the problems that can be created with watercolour and the painting of watercolour and how I might advise you to get out of them if indeed there is a way of getting out of them or indeed a way to avoid them. <music> So that's really what this video is about. Now, it's a big, big subject, as I said just now. I'm not going to cover everything in one video, not unless I'm going to make it a very, very long video and you guys are going to go to sleep or switch off. So what I'm going to do is break it up into bite-sized pieces over the coming weeks, I hope, and add one every so often or add two points every so often so that you can build that into a rather concise um, reference point that you can maybe go to and help yourselves to understand if that happened, why it happened and how you might get away with it or how you could avoid it in the first place. So without further ado, I am going to turn this uh, camera down and I'm going to show you how I do a few things and how I can get into trouble very, very easily <laughs> and I hope to show you a way out of it. So before I go any further, let me just say, please, if you are watching this, you're not a subscriber, as I always ask you to please subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything and it really does help me grow. It tells the uh, algorithms within YouTube that I am a channel that is worth promoting. So every time that you subscribe, every time you comment, you put a thumbs up and a like, uh, all of those things or even share. All of those things help the channel grow. And if you want even more than that, you know what's coming next, my Patreon. It's over there. It's got tons of films on it ready for you to enjoy and learn from. It's being added to every month. Two more full-length, fully narrated videos are added every month. And it doesn't cost you very much, 5 or $10 a month. It's not an awful lot of money to put out there when there is so much resource on hand for you to enjoy. On top of that, there is a weekly live stream within the Patreon every Friday at 7 p.m. just for Patreons. There is also a dedicated Facebook community page just for all my patrons to interact with each other, show work, talk about it, ask questions of me, get answers, get help, all of those things. So if you fancy popping over there, the link to my Patreon is always under the Show More tab in every video that I put out on YouTube. So take a look at it, nip on over, and I tell you, it would be fantastic to welcome you on board. You'd enjoy it. It'd be a great experience, and I'd love to help you out even further. In the meantime, let's look about, let's talk about watercolour and some issues that I've had and that you've had, and let's see how we can sort them out. Now, the very first thing that I would like to talk to you about is having a piece of paper on board. This, you can see, is a very damaged piece. But having a piece of paper on board and you are painting away. Um, hopefully, I, I do this well enough for you. But let's just say you're painting away and the painting is just moving. And, you know, you're trying to keep it and you're holding it down. You're trying to look up at the reference and do all of that sort of stuff. And the thing is that your concentration is being broken first and foremost. Uh, you can't hold on to a piece of paper with one hand and expect it to uh, and have full command over the brush, the colours and all the other parts of the painting that you need to do. Watercolour is hard enough as it is without having the extra things of holding on to the paper, stopping it moving whilst you're painting. So always tape it down or fix it or stretch it whichever way. Another way is to use a um, block of watercolour paper. I always use a block of watercolour paper when I'm demonstrating to a class or indeed if I'm out in the field doing some plein air. 
I always take a block with me because that way I don't have to worry about it moving and I don't have to worry about stretching it or taping it down. But in all other regards, you'll see me always have paper that is stretched and either taped as this one is. This is taped on the edges. That part of it is for effect, but this part is to hold it down so that when I'm painting it, I actually don't have to think about where it is. It's there. So that's one I'm very first, very, very quickly out of the way, but at least you know it's there and you shouldn't have to keep trying to hold on to it and stop it escaping off the board. Okay, so another issue that is a very, very common one, and I see it when I'm teaching all the time in my gallery in Hive, that students, when they are creating like a sky or a wash or something like that, they'll mix up the paint in their small palettes or whatever, you know, the little travel palettes that they often have, um, and they never mix enough. And the thing is that uh, when you're mixing watercolour, you really do need to have enough water and paint mixed up, ready to go to do the job. Now, to quantify that is extremely hard, and very few of us can actually mix up the exact amount we need to do a particular job but rather have too much paint mixed up, ready to go and not use it than have not enough mixed up and not ready to go and having to stop halfway through and having to remix. It's bad enough if you're doing just an ordinary single color, but if you are mixing several colors together, then that's even harder still because you will never ever remix the same pigment again so that it will cause you a problem. Let me just demonstrate what I mean. If you are trying to do a wash, let's just very quickly, let's just put a line down through here. As I say, this is a piece of old paper. One thing that I see a lot of people do is they use too small a brush to do the job. And the thing is that if you're gonna do a wash, then you need something a lot chunkier. Now, I haven't got all my regular brushes with me, but I do have several larger brushes this one is certainly larger than this one and is more capable of delivering more paint than this one ever will be. But when you see people, uh, I see a lot of people painting, they'll mix up and they'll have, um, they'll have hard color, which they haven't sort of, uh, I'll tell you about that in a minute, but they go straight into their color and they mix a little bit in their pan and they start painting away to do a nice sky like this. And a small brush is in hand and all of a sudden the paint's going out. It's a lovely warm day and they're trying and all of a sudden the paint's gone so they've got to come back in and they've got to remix it. I'm probably mixing way too much but then they come back in and oh okay so now we've got the first problem. We have indeed uh, too much colour. We didn't mix the same uh, amount of pigment to water to start with. So what do we do now? All the time we're making this decision, this paint is drying. This first layer is drying up. And once that's dried, it's a done deal. It's sealed. You can't get rid of these edges. All the time that it's damp, you may stand a chance. But unless you get that paint at the same level as the rest of it, you're going to have no end of problems. And you can see that I've got a patchwork now. If I come back here and try again, already the paint underneath has dried and caused me a hard edge. So what I don't want is any of this really, it's just too much aggravation. If I come back in again and do some more, I have to remix uh, because it's, it's all gone. Then I come back in and I'm remixing again and all of a sudden, it's all changing and it doesn't look good. So what I would say to everybody, if you've got anything of a large body of color to do, then consider making sure that you have sufficient um, paint and water mixed up so that you can go ahead and confidently cover the area with your wash very, very quickly as it comes down. It will remain the same grade like that and if you need to mix more on the off chance because you've got this lovely grade wash coming down it is very very easy to add some more color and keep it going because the bead at the bottom is still wet 
and so we have a lovely mix now the reason that this is all uh, sort of pixelated and horrible here is because the paper itself is quite badly damaged it's quite old I used it just to show you how you can create this or this just by having the right amount of paint ready to go on your palette okay so uh, the point is about this once it's dry there really is no way out you can sometimes put a heavier color over the top and try and put another wash over the top it seldom works and it seldom is a good answer better to have it right in the first place and do a lovely wash and have the right amount of pigment in there before you get started so that's tip number two okay let's go for another one and that is that I see a lot of people when they are painting they paint with the their sort of paper is always on the flat on a flat table and that really isn't a great thing to do because the paint will not flow the paint can't travel down paint or water more than paint paint is carried by the water and it's only by allowing that water to cascade down at a certain angle will allow the flow of the watercolor to uh, certainly in washes to look and be correct if it's on a flat then it will not travel it will just puddle and that really isn't good news so my tip number three would be always have your painting or your paper set up on an angle 30 degrees is really good uh, anymore that's fine not a problem with that I sometimes like the easel behind me have it on an easel at work or when I'm demonstrating to a, a larger crowd of people it's possibly the only way that they're going to be able to see what I'm doing properly but if you have the painting on a nice angle and this is just a piece of wood that is set up at an angle it's not 30 degrees that's only because I do a lot of filming above me and it really helps to have it at this angle I would love to have it somewhere at about 30 degrees something like that just that bit more but what it will allow is the paint to come down and work uh, in the manner that it should so that's tip number three let's see if we can go for another one okay so tip number four and it's probably one of the biggest banes of a watercolorist life and that is cauliflowers or bleed backs or run backs whatever you want to call them they are a pain to deal with they happen when you least expect it and um, can be wrecking a painting in just like that it's really awful why do they happen and how do they happen well the the why is because we don't do things properly the how is a scientific one basically water will spread itself wherever it can until it runs out of momentum in other words if it's on a surface that is um, um, absorbing like a watercolor paper if there's a lot of water it will travel out from its source and the moment that it can't go any further it's because it's been absorbed by all of the paper it can't go any further so you wouldn't you could do that with clear water on a piece of watercolor paper and you wouldn't see any difference you could go all day doing that and you probably will not see any difference the moment you have pigment in your water then there you will see the difference you'll see the issues when a watercolor is bone dry totally dry it won't happen you can put washes and glazes over you can glaze and layer up on watercolor without any problems it's when we don't wait or we haven't waited or there's still some moisture in our paper that's when the problems occur because we introduce fresh water fresh color to an area to an area that is not quite dry and the moment we do that this new amount of water wants to push on wants to go forward and by doing that it's going to pick up all the color that's ahead of it and say I'm coming in I'm moving in and it will just go out like fingers and when it runs out of motion when it runs out of its own steam to keep pushing through 
it will stop, it will dry up, and that's when you get this edge of a cauliflower. And this will carry on happening all the time you do that. And another big area that we often do that, when, when you've got a tape at the bottom of your paper, tape is uh, more of a plasticky surface in some ways, or waxy surface, and it doesn't absorb water in the same way as your watercolor paper. So when we get a, a nice wash coming down and we've got beads of water settling against either on or next to that masking tape that if we use it, well, as that dries, if we don't get it off, as that dries, it will also create a cauliflower because that water is sensing that there's, there's a way to go and it will push back into that. Let me do a couple of things for you. Let me just show you what I mean. So let's put in, I'm going to have to sort of wait little bits for this to happen. But let's just put uh, some nice indigo on there. A really, really strong colour. I love this colour. Let's put a lot of water. Well, not so much water, maybe. Let's just put a fairly good amount of water on there. Let's, it's a lovely warm evening, so let's just set that up. Let that start to dry a little bit, and then I'll show you how the cauliflowers work. And then we can see how we might prevent some of them in the future. Now, it's not to say that we don't ever want them because certain artists love to create them because they can also, in the right places, purposefully created, create a marvelous effect. And so, although they are the bane for most of us, they're not that for all of us. We do like to be able to create them as and when needed. So. This is still drying up and it's going to be a little while to do that. So I'm going to put this to one side and I'll come back to you as and when I'm ready to go with the next bit. Okay, I have just artificially dried it a little bit. I just needed this. It's going to take too long otherwise. So what I'm going to do now is I've decided there's my color. I want to put another color next to it. I haven't actually waited for it to dry properly. And I'm going to put on, before I do that though, I'm just going to put on another area and I'm going to allow this part here to dry up completely. And I'll show you what effect that is. And then I'll also put on this area, which is going to be the same color, but it's got a lot more water to it. Okay, and I'm going to leave that to settle down and let that start to dry as well. All right, so let's go back to this one and let's add our second color. Let's go for uh, some red, lovely vermilion, and let's just put that in and we've already got a problem happening. So I've got it going on here. Now, the first things first, I put on the red with much more water to it than was in here. So it doesn't matter the fact that I could have put in a lot more pigment. The fact there's a lot more water going on, it will cause me this cauliflower. You can see already the water is gaining momentum. It's pushing forward, it's picking up the indigo and it's pushing it forward of itself. That's still drying, but let me come back to this one. This is still very wet and uh, the degrees of drying will allow spread of water. We know about that, and I'll probably do that in another video. But if I want, if this is starting to dry, but there's quite a bit of water into it, I don't want the cauliflower to form. I want to put this down. Now, the fact is, one way to help prevent cauliflowers is to make sure that your color next to it, or the color that you put on top, has more pigment and less water into it so that they will dry. At, even though that's still wet, that will dry at a much slower pace. And this being fresher paint has a certain amount of water into it. And that too will dry at a very, very similar pace. And because of that, there might be a bit of bleed, but hopefully there won't be a cauliflower. And not like this one. And that's the problem. Okay, let me just demonstrate what I was gonna do just now. Let's just put this piece of color down here. But what will be a problem is if I leave that like that. I'm going to leave that like that. I'm going to put another one right next to it here. Exactly the same thing, just to show you. 
going to put a bit on there. Lots of water just settling down onto that. And we've all done it when we've done um, a lovely wash or something like that. We come to the bottom of our paper and there's a tape barrier there or on the side. Doesn't matter where it is, it can happen. But always have some kitchen rail, uh, kitchen towel handy and just tap off, first and foremost, tap off the paper so that there's no residue of water pooling on there. And as this descends, let's just make that a little more obvious. Let's put a lot more water in there. And this is actually pooling down here now. If I leave it as I've left this one, I do stand the risk of a cauliflower. So all I do is I either take a dry or damp brush or indeed a little piece of paper, just soak up the excess water. There's still enough moisture for this paint to start running back in. So don't worry about that too much. But if I leave this one, it's going to be the fact that there, this will dry up sooner than this area here. And that's when the, the possible cauliflower can start asserting itself. You can see here by adding the extra um, pigment to the water ratio that the bleeding is very minimal, but there's certainly no cauliflowers. And here, where we just didn't take enough care, we have a good cauliflower that's formed and we can't ever get rid of that. It's a very, very um, hard edge once it's dry. And so I'm going to leave that for a minute or two and I'm going to come back and we're going to do one more. Hopefully I can squeeze another one in, making it number five on this video. I'm doing good. Okay, for the fifth and final little tip in this episode on how not to do watercolors or how to get yourself out of trouble with watercolors. Let's look at uh, artificial drying. Now, the thing is that as a watercolor demonstrator, as a person who creates watercolors and films them for you guys to watch and enjoy, and on my Patreon too, there is a case that I can't always wait around for paint to dry. Uh, I have to artificially dry it off. Sometimes that really causes me a problem. And let me explain to you how that is. Because so let's just dive straight back in with some indigo. I'm going to put a little bit more water to it this time. This paper is not rough paper. This is an old piece of hot press paper. And it will act slightly differently. But let's just put this on. I'm just trying to very, very quickly show you the uh, issues that will be associated with drying the paint way too quickly if it's too wet. Let's just leave it like that. Let's put that hairdryer back on and let's just see if we can't recreate this. Okay. That was rather extreme, but you get the idea. It blew paint this way. It has left a wet patch there, which is so often the case, and it's dried up, but not totally dried up, this area here and here. And as they now continue to dry off, they will create a hard edge cauliflower or this sort of bleed back run, whatever you want to call it and it will totally destroy the look of your painting. If you had something that was looking like this all over, you might get away with it. I love doing abstract bees, as you well know. And um, I use some of these things in those sort of paintings because they are desired, they work for me, and that's fantastic. But when I'm doing something of a, no it's a normal watercolor, I don't quite mean that, but when I'm trying to paint a, a regular watercolor, uh, I want things without cauliflowers, without these runs, without the, the changes that I've been trying to show you. So that is avoided by either using a hairdryer from a great height and not giving a rush of air, just a very gentle air flow or allowing the painting to dry naturally where you will have less problems. You can still get a run back, you can still get a cauliflower, but there's much less chance of it. Okay, now, so I hope in this little five uh, tips bit that you've learned something from it. There are many more uh, 
uh, things that I can talk about. And over the coming weeks, I will hopefully add to this one and do more tips in future videos for you. So if you've liked this uh, and enjoyed it and learned something from it, then please give it the thumbs up. That would be fantastic, as I said. And if in the comments section you have any other thoughts, if you've had particular issues that you would like me to address in another video, please write them down. I'll read them. I'll answer them to you and I will try and cover them in a future video. That I can only promise. It just depends if you write the uh, question and ask it of me. But I'm really happy to get involved and help you all out as best I can and to give you the information that you really need to uh, hone your skills as a watercolour painter or indeed as an oil painter. It doesn't just have to be watercolours, it can be oils or any other medium. I'm happy in all of them. So with that said and done, it only remains for me to say thank you very much for watching. I do hope you got something from it. I do hope that you'll join me very soon for another one, another top tips. I don't know what I'm going to call this one yet. Am I going to call it how not to paint in watercolour, how to avoid problems in watercolour, how to get yourself out of trouble, how to start painting watercolour. It just goes on and on and on. Um, anyway, I'll come up with a title and I do hope you'll join me in the second one of these, which I hope will be out very, very soon. Take care. Happy painting. Don't forget, send me those questions and give me your comments. All the best. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Bye-bye.